What is good everybody and welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today we have another episode of the Monday Night Raw review. Actually, this episode of Monday Night Raw was pretty solid. I agreed with a lot of it. I thought the matches were pretty dang good, and it is definitely a step up from where we have been in the last few Raw episodes for sure. I think now that the Royal Rumble has passed us, I think we're going to get a breath of fresh air as we head on the road to WrestleMania. Um, there were some questionable decisions about this Monday Night Raw. We will get into that. So let's go ahead and get the show rolling. So to start off the show, they were showing Ronda Rousey Rumble videos and just her coming out of the ring, you know, making her debut. Shows how many big time news articles they were featured in over her debut. And I was just blah, blah, blah. That's the only reason she's even in the company. But... The show starts off, Stephanie McMahon comes to the ring, and just to add a little thing in there, Jonathan Coachman is back on commentary, which is such a huge step up from Booker T, thank God. I loved Coach, and it's such a, you know, a nostalgia type pop for me that he was on tonight's show, and I cannot wait to see how he does moving forward. I thought he was really, really great, but... Stephanie talks about 25 years of Raw, gets some cheap pops talking about the Women's Royal Rumble and everything. Uh, Rondi's name, I heard a few boos from the crowd when she was mentioned. It wasn't too heavy, but I did notice a few boo boos. Um, she talks about the undefeated Asuka, talks about her winning the Royal Rumble. Then, of course, her music does hit and we have Asuka coming to the ring. So now Asuka and Stephanie McMahon are sharing the ring. Um, crowd is going nuts for Asuka. And she points to the WrestleMania sign. Stephanie announces that Alexa Bliss will defend her Women's Championship in the Elimination Chamber in the first ever Women's Chamber match. I knew that was coming. I predicted it during the Royal Rumble. But um, Asuka should choose her opponent carefully is what Stephanie says. And then, of course, the boss, Sasha Banks, her music hits and she comes to the ring, gets in Asuka's face and congratulates her in quotations right there. She says she's ready for Asuka tonight, and so a match is announced for later between the two women. So our first match of the night is a last man standing qualifying matchup for the Elimination Chamber between Braun Strowman and Kane. Braun Strowman comes out pissed off, man, starts throwing some tables and chairs into the ring. We come back from break and the fight spills out to the crowd. Braun hitting Kane with chairs. He lifts up part of the stage and crushes Kane with the announce table and part of the stage, pinning Kane underneath, and that, I guess, wins him the matchup. Kane is no longer able to move. He can't stand up, obviously. So that is the end of the match. The medical team comes off. I thought at first that this was going to be a ploy to write Kane off of TV, but we would find out later that um, I still think it's probably going to write him off TV, but we did learn later that he had um, he had been sent to a medical facility, and um, it was pretty cool to see Braun win in such dominant fashion. However, it was a pretty much a nothing match just to get Braun into the elimination chamber. Paramedics come out, and Corey Graves does an interview with Braun asking him what he just did. He replies, I did my job. Kurt Angle said, last man standing, and well, and then he does his Braun celebration. We come back from the break, and they're talking about the Kane and Braun situation. Um, again, like I said, Kane taken to local medical facilities to ride him off television. Shows Kane on the stretcher. Um, then we come to backstage. Kurt Angle runs up to Braun, yelling at him about what he did to Kane. An intense response from Braun. I digged it a ton. He said, you know, uh, you said last man standing, so that's what I did. Just like at Elimination Chamber, I'll be the last one standing. And just like WrestleMania, I'll be the last one standing over Brock Lesnar. Walks off. Very nice promo by Kurt and Braun. I really liked it. It had a lot of substance to it. It felt real. And if you did not know, the winner of the Elimination Chamber at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view um, will go on to fight Brock at WrestleMania. So you know Big Dog is going to win that one. So we cut to the ring and Elias is in the ring, you know, talking about John Cena. And at this moment, I wrote in my notes that I was going to go ahead and call that John Cena would face Elias at Elimination Chamber. And I wanted to add in that I actually liked his song he sang tonight, the Whoa, 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 It's Elias Night song. It was actually pretty catchy in my opinion. I liked his runs in that one. But the theme music hits and he is interrupted by none other than Matt Hardy. And Matt Hardy obviously has a match with Elias tonight. It is an Elimination Chamber qualifying matchup. Your typical Raw match. You know, Elias works the arm of Hardy on the ring post. And then out of nowhere, Bray Wyatt's uh, little vignette hits. And he is on the Titan Tron just laughing. And um, then it cuts all of a sudden to... Uh, my bad. Um, it cuts to the ring, uh, distracting Matt Hardy. Elias hits Matt Hardy with a big boot and a drift away, and that is it. 
Bray Wyatt appears on the Titantron then and starts laughing. And I thought this was weird because it was in the middle of this and then it just cut to The Miz on a live stream talking about Roman Reigns. So I don't know why it did that. Maybe it was just the stream I was watching, but that's what happened on the stream. Uh, Bray Wyatt, I am sick of him in every feud. It's like the same shtick over and over, you know, just the laughing and everything. I just thought that was just trash. Up next, we have the Intercontinental Championship rematch between The Miz and Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns obviously lost his championship at Raw 25, so he was invoking his rematch clause here. Miz tries some chest chops, but they are ineffective because of Roman's bulletproof vest. He throws Miz into the steel steps. Roman grabs a chair and approaches the Miz Taraj and chases them out. And um, backstage they go. Um, Roman has the chair about to hit the Miz, but then changes his mind and throws the chair away. This little distraction leads to the Miz pulling Reigns into the ring post. And then later on, Roman goes for the spear. The Miz cut tackles Roman right in the knee, and that becomes the little story of the matchup. Miz locks in the ugliest figure four I've ever seen. It just did not look right. His uh, figure four always looks awful, and he does not pay good tribute to Ric Flair with that. But he keeps working on the knee of Roman. Miz pokes Roman in the eye, hits the skull crushing finale. Thought it was over, but it was not. At this point, my live stream sort of cut out, so I did not get to see the finish. But later on, I realized that Miz retained with a roll-up. I believe that was the outcome of this matchup. But now that Roman Reigns is completely out of the Intercontinental Championship picture, he will most likely have a qualifying matchup for the Elimination Chamber next Monday. And I'm sure, as always, he will pick up the win, go on to EC, win the thing, and head to WrestleMania to fight Brock. The Revival come out next, and we have The Revival versus Heath Slater and Rhino. The match was nothing special. The Revival win with the, mach the Machatter Machine. They win with the Shatter Machine, and then they are, um, I guess they're trying to build them back up after their burial at Raw 25. I guess that's where they're going with this. But um, just a random tag team TV match. Promo after the match. They crap on the crowd for chaining ECW. Revival say they learn from their mistakes and that these people can't stop living in the past. We cut to a live stream like interview with Finn Balor and the club. He's talking about his Royal Rumble performance, talking about him being the Iron Man of the matchup. Talks about John Cena costing him the Rumble and that he was going to get his payback tonight. Up next, we had what was probably match of the night, no doubt. We had Sasha Banks taking on Asuka. Really great match, very hard hitting. Both women brought it for sure. I thought Sasha Banks died a few times in this match. She definitely took a very scary bump. A few, actually. One time she tried a suicide dive and Asuka kicked her in the face midair and she drops on her neck. Very, very scary looking. I'm sure you have seen the gif by now, but it looked absolutely awful. Very good back and forth work by both women. Um, a few times it actually looked like Asuka was going to tap out to the bank statement, but thank God she did not. She actually won the match with the Asuka lock, and I hope they do not burn out this feud on TV because this is very interesting, and I cannot wait to see more from these women. So please, WWE, do not ruin this. We cut to a John Cena promo, and he talks about his path to WrestleMania 34, and that path went through Finn Balor. Then the Elimination Chamber, and he is just getting started in WWE, and we would come to find out that, man, I don't know what they are doing with this guy. He was acting real heelish tonight, and that heel turn is like 10 years too late. I do not want that, even though I think he's the greatest of all time, even though he's my favorite superstar of all time. Um, I don't know about all that. Next match, we had The Bar taking on Titus Catering in a Raw Tag Team title match. And the bar do retain, and this match was nice. Glad to see this team actually looking solid. I thought that Titus and Apollo looked good. Um, first time in a while, even though they had the upset victories over the bar the past two times, I thought that Apollo was money, and this match did surprise me a lot. I thought this was just going to be a little squash match, but they actually made Apollo and them look pretty credible. And it was a pretty solid matchup, and I was glad to see that all the wrestling take place on this card was actually good tonight, and that it wasn't the wor it was a much better episode of Raw than I was expecting. Before the main event, we were notified that a cane apparently crawled out of the ER and has not been seen since. Our main event was making history. We had John Cena taking on Finn Balor in the final Elimination Chamber qualifying matchup of the night. And I gotta say, man, I did not see this coming at all. I do have a booking, um, little fantasy booking I'm gonna do here at the end of the video. But John Cena pins Finn Balor clean in this matchup. I did not see this coming. Um, I feel like a lot of people were pissed off about this, myself included. Even though John Cena is my favorite, I'm a huge fan of Finn Balor. And I do not like the way Finn Balor's been booked. And this does not add to that. That is just, I don't get it. But this is my thinking right here. 
John Cena will show up at the Elimination Chamber ready to enter the, you know, ready to enter the match. I think the club and Finn Balor jumped John Cena like Edge did uh, a while back. I think it was 2009 or 10. And I think he's going to take the place of John Cena in that Elimination Chamber match. Finn Balor will go on to lose the Elimination Chamber. And then we will have John Cena taking on Finn Balor at WrestleMania. I don't think we're going to get an Undertaker. I think The Undertaker is done, and I think we're going to get John Cena taking on Balor at WrestleMania, and that Finn Balor will actually win as the Demon over John Cena at WrestleMania. That is my prediction for this one, but again, I still, if that's not the way they're going with it, man, this is a total waste of Finn Balor. It's just crapping on Finn Balor, and I do not agree with that. Love John Cena, but I did not like that. You know, John Cena didn't have to win this matchup unless it's for future booking um, storyline-wise at the Elimination Chamber. That's the only way this w looks pretty good, but only time will tell. But that is your complete Monday Night Raw review, guys. Hope you guys did enjoy. Leave a like. Get this video to 300 likes. Leave a comment what you thought of Monday Night Raw. I thought it was a very solid episode, a lot better than they've been doing leading up to the Royal Rumble. Now that the Rumble is gone, maybe we can step up our television. We will see tomorrow night with SmackDown Live. But I will see you guys in the next video. Subscribe for more epic WWE and WWE figure-related videos. And I will see you guys later. Thank you.